Hi guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Ansible Network Modules. Ansible Network Modules can configure your network stake, test and validate existing network state and discover and correct network configuration drift. After going through this tutorial, I promise you that the concept and understanding of Ansible will be absolutely clear to you. This series is divided into multiple parts, therefore subscribe to the channel and follow the playlist. But before that, let me ask you a few things. Are you dreaming of a career with higher pay and more responsibilities? Or are you ready to take your skills to the next level this year? Then start investing in DevOps School certification level courses, which will help you to emerge skills for a wide range of entry-level roles and as well as higher potential future positions. But with thousands of courses online and in classroom worldwide, finding the right one for your career goals can be difficult. You can consider our courses like Agile Developer, Agile QA, DevOps Certified Professionals, Site Reliability Engineering, DevSecOps and Masters in DevOps Engineering where you will have access to well-structured, easy-to-follow course content that has been developed and will be delivered by industry professionals. You can join on our training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshops then we have regular sessions available in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Delhi NCR, Mumbai and in Pune. Simply compare our many courses, find the one that suits your style and schedule best and start today. Okay, so first question is what is Ansible? Okay, this is the first question. Now, not too much of discussions rather than showing you the demo, two minute stuff. So simple, we say, we all say it's a config management tool. Okay, config management means configuration management of what? Of what? So, in a simple way, primarily it's for servers. Remember, it's not a server, servers S means you want to configure the servers through Ansible. Okay, now next thing you will say what configurations you are talking about. Okay, what configurations? So it can be anything, it can be files, change, it can be directory, it can be, yeah, it can be, uh, you know, services, it can be users, it can be packages, it can be anything literally. When I say file means, file is a very broad keywords, right? So it can be literally anything you want to configure. It. What do you want to do? You want to install some packages, you want to uninstall some packages, you want to copy some files, you want to modify some files, you want to start the services, you want to create a user, you want to create a group, you want to modify some users, literally whatever you want, you can configure it using Ansible in a multiple service, in a simple way. So that's the reason we call it Ansible is a configuration management tool. Are you able to understand it? Yeah. Yeah. So now, but uh, many people say, hey, we use this as a deployment also. Deployment means simple uh, package deployment. So of course you can deploy in a uh, multiple server because it can do a lot of things in the multiple servers deployment. Yeah, primarily uh, we are using for deployment only, deployment of OpenStack, RHOHP 16 and configuration yeah. in our case. So uh, deployment tool, why we say? Because you do a lot of things in the servers, multiple servers, and these are the changes you do. That's typically we call it deployment because our package, we when we use our package in the multiple servers to install it and configure it, that's called a deployment. Make sense? Yeah. So like that. Now they have a multiple releases actually, you know, multiple releases. Which one I'm teaching you? Ansible. CMD version, free, open source. Okay. Now, second one which we have is Ansible Tower. Okay. This is a GUI based actually, and it's a paid one. Now, there's one more. We call it AWX, not SX. I don't know how why they named it this one. Okay. So basically, this is a also GUI, and it's a it's a like it says you can say uh, latest version of tower which is not tested make sense so beta beta version uh something like that you can see it's not tested and it's uh, you can go ahead and use it 
and um, no limitation but if they, if you if you if you have some bugs over there uh, ansible will not support i mean red red will not support right so now this is the stuff now this code is written in which language so this tool is written in a language which is called python okay that means if you want to customize it i think you know which language you have to learn right and one more thing this is from the company name which is called red hat i think recently it got acquired by ibm also right correct now okay so this is the stuff so why we use it uh, i mean this tool is what i'm teaching you ansible command line why we use it for deployment and configurations written in python and from the com so so now let's say next thing you'll say okay uh, uh why ansible there should be some reasons for it right so first of all uh ansible is easy to learn okay easy to learn easy to debug easy to share easy to write easy to test easy to extend compared to all programming language for this is important for domain that's called deployment and configurations config of server okay understand that here let's say you will go for deployment work on configurations work and you will write some some different you will use some different language let's say python perl or java you can use any language for the sake of it but if you come uh, for work work this is the domain domain work domain is deployment and configurations so if you if you go for this and start writing a code and functionality then you will find this is comparing python and all it's easy to debug share write test and extend so see that this tool is written in python but, but basically if you go and design all the software in python for deployment it will take more time but you know this is a designed for deployment this tool is designed for deployment though it's written in uh, python but it, this is designed for deployment and configuration we call it a domain specific language this is a domain specific language so that way it's compared to uh, easy to learn debug share and all stuff like that but you cannot use ansible for different domain python you can use for the different domain but you cannot use ansible for different domain so basically this ansible is designed for ease of work debug share write test and extend but only for this problem make sense uh, so one okay. query uh, this python is it uh, unnecessary language or uh, to learn this sensible or without no, no. it we can no if you want to customize it you have to learn python customization customization is beyond the tools there's a hell lot of functionalities available you want to add more functionality then you need to learn python mm -hmm. okay so this is the reason we use it but some other reasons we can say this is the idea important functionality this tool will give you idea important functionality what exactly that is anyone idea important so idea important means i'll put it in this way uh, simple understand this uh, whatever you have desire this tool will convert into actual that's all that's all i don't put it i'll put it in a context so let's say you have a 10 steps in your script and uh, this you are running first time okay 10 step you are running in the script and let's say each each steps is taking 1 minute so how much time it will take 10 minutes correct huh? 
correct now yeah hello so now you have next next time you have only two change okay only two change out of 10 steps there is only two change second time okay so here only two steps will run while the ansible so it will take two minutes and how much time you got it here sorry here one minutes for these two steps and then two minutes so this is called idiom porting in a simple way if I, the tool will check whatever i am running it's done or done in the server or not is there in the server or not the whatever you desire is there in actual or not in the server if it's not there then make the changes if is there skip it that's called idiom porting this functionality is nowadays coming in all the tools actually you name it ansible share puppet salt terraform uh, arm or cloud formations everywhere is there make sense mm -hmm. yeah so this way you can save them apart from that again uh, this is a platform independent that means this code uh, will work in the uh, windows also or linux also okay whereas you know powershell command you cannot run in linux bash command you cannot run in the windows so like that so these are the some of the major reasons why we use ansible now what, what are the tools which uh, which is competing with ansible so many tools are there chef is there puppet is there salt is there these are the major one okay so and uh, but 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 ansible is a market leader okay so now we discuss about what is ansible and why ansible are you okay with so uh, are they are this similar uh, this uh, chef puppet and salt to ansible or somewhat uh, very much different see uh, it's like similar means i did not understand but it's like a ola and uber this one hdfc bank or icic bank something like that okay so problems they are solving same chef is also solving the same problem puppet is also solving the same problem salt is also solving the same problem ansible is also solving the same I, i think ansible is a clientless you just need a ssh to the target server other other things i think uh, they need a client uh, in software. that case uh, no 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 i mean see uh, fundamentally if you talk chef is also agentless you can make it puppet also agentless you can make it by the way ansible also has a agent actually So it's not like that. Ansible is not having agent. They do have agent, but default mechanism to to communicate with the remote machine is SSH. And most of the time, think is in simple way. Most of the time, Linux has a SSH installed by default. Python installed by default. So we say, hey, it's agentless. But theoretically, you need something in the client machine that is SSH to be configured, which is coming default now. Now uh, there is a way in Chef also over the network you can uh, make it agentless. So uh, this is a uh, like uh, very pend lending, pending. I mean this lending discussions which you can make it makes sense. But there is no primary. Uh, I mean if you say functional wise, uh, I can do only with Ansible, not with the Chef and not with Puppet. Not true. You can do everything with Chef, Puppet, and Ansible. The Ansible is popular. Why? because of only one reason and that is like it has a lots of community involvement community involvement means there's so much of module has been written which you won't find in the chef and puppet one more thing why why is that uh, so why the chef and puppet the module has not been written and only in the ansible because of one more reason chef is a, a ruby driven puppet is a ruby driven uh, whereas ansible is python driven on top of it remember that ansible is promoted by red hat which is a very very uh, you know large company and large community base and also like that whereas chef and puppet is a newbie in that so they could not uh, you know impact the market so much makes sense yeah uh, but uh, apart from the servers uh, like uh, i have seen uh, nowadays uh, ansible is used for configuring the routers which is or the vnf the specifically telco equipments yes yes uh, so that's what that's called module actually so you will see the modules for the networking operating systems 
a cloud so many module has been written which you won't find in this chef and puppet though you can do that in direct way okay but uh, ease it's all about ease understand that easy for doing the stuff is not there in in uh, chef and puppet so it's like that. got it mm -hmm. okay okay so now next question is uh, ansible architecture okay ansible architecture now something like we can say how ansible works so in every architecture we are having human means you and me and you talk to acs and then acs talk to ars s s why i am writing ss you know that right multiple ars correct no now what is acs so in simple way you can call it ansible control server and this ars means ansible remote server okay simple remote servers s multiple server acs you have one and ars you have a multiple makes sense yeah okay now in this we have acs and then we have ars now acs understand that human need to be human only that's uh, for sure but here acs need to be linux only it cannot be windows also okay and there is a some prerequisite in linux python should be stored okay and civil should be stored okay in acs and you need to have inventory for it in acs inventory you need to have a playbook also now all this thing i'll teach you don't worry about that see in acs you have it has to be linux here it can be ars can be anything here it has to be python if it is a linux linux ars it has to be python and plus ssh and if it is a windows then if it is a windows then what need to be there uh, what need to be there win winrm plus winrm plus powershell c dot okay understand see for windows powershell for linux ssh for windows winrm for linux python is like that <clears throat> now here python need to be there so this is the prerequisite ansible has to be installed here nothing not applicable inventory has to be there playbook has to be there now you'll ask me what is inventory and what is a playbook i'll discuss a little bit later okay so in a, if you look at the architecture in acs you have to install ansible and you have to have inventory you have to have a playbook in ars it can be windows linux if it is linux python plus ssh windows plus winrm plus powershell 3 should be there and so forth so here you see that there is no agent you are installing though you have a agent in form of ssh and winrm and ps but we call it agentless why because ssh you find in all linux powershell you can find in all windows make sense all of you yeah yeah so now here authentication authentication and authorization authorization so what is authentication and authorization authentication means uh, how to log in okay how to log in authorization means what you are allowed to do there's a two things so uh, look at this this perspective let me draw pictures here see here. this is a machine this think simple okay don't complicate every every tool is very easy to learn ars acs sorry here it's acs and this machine is ars ars now i want little bit of more machines of this ars copy paste okay so i have a two machines of ars now this is you so you go here and run the some commands in the acs 
okay and this command has to run in ers so now from here when it trigger the tunnel is done this is ssh tunnel if it is a wind linux i'm considering the linux okay and if it is a windows then which tunnel is created which tunnel WinRM is supporting Win HTTP. HTTP, okay. Please remember. This is HTTP tunnel. Okay, so here what happened? The ACS send the request to the ARS parallelly through SSH or WinRM for the in Windows also. So now what is happening? Here this script has to execute now parallelly, correct now? So now to execute, to run this script, what login you want so here this is authentication model so here you can do ssh winrm uh, ssh again two ways user and uh, password winrm here multiple supports are there for winrm let me show you here winrm authentications method okay see here so so many ways to authenticate okay ssh username and password and one more username and key also is allowed right correct now correct now here you can authenticate through certificates also Okay, so these are the authentication supported primarily. We use SSH for. Okay, we use SSH password and SSH key. But authorization means what? Authorization means what? <coughs> Think simple. Let's say you are passing authorizations to run something on this one. So here, here, are you the normal user, or are you the pseudo user, or are you the root user are you understanding all of you yeah so what authentications authorizations you are passing so here few scenarios are there i would like to tell you these are authentications how to log in and what you are allowed to do authentication authorization so here you can pass username with password password Okay, I'll just try to not complicate. Username with sudo. Sudo without password. Sudo without password. There's a only username. Here, username with. Do let me if you're not able to understand. Username flat. Username with sudo or with sudo without a password username with sudo with password username with sudo with another user another user this one so do let me know did you understand this so basically you create a user and that should be part of the sudo's group right ha huh. so here understand this while while working with and you deploy the script here now script will run here here so the authentications whatever authorizations you passed it authentication let's say let's say username and password for this machine and for this machine whether that user this user what kind of access they have so typically you know i'll, I'll put it in this way so let's say you log in to boxes and let me show you rather than a talk uh, this is the boxes okay i'm going to use it for today so which user right now i'm logged in ubuntu so what i do sudo hyphen s 
see without a password i become a root exit sometime it will ask you the password to become a root are you understanding hmm. now sometime it will ask you so that is what i am saying username you can do with the user means who want to is the user you can do with that user but sometime what do you need username with a sudo, sudo without a password like a sudo hyphen s like this now if sometime you, you need a password and sometime you need to become another user that means if you want to do some activity you have to become another user and then do that so uh, you want to user is not allowed so you log in as a want to after that you become a su let's say xyz and then do that stuff so multiple authentication mechanism is set in the linux server you need to know all that i hope you is clear access okay okay so now we discuss about architecture in acs we have to have a ansible install and then in ars this is the stuff authentications today we will work with uh, uh, user key and uh, uh, user and key okay but you can use the password also uh, these are the auth authentication method for the winrm i mean windows and these are the authorizations oh, okay so now next thing is ansible so the question is question is what happens when you install ansible how to install ansible that i'll show you through the demo how to install ansible but what happens when you install ansible so guys ansible the moment you install it you will get few component okay components of ansible components of ansible okay which are the component you get it so first thing you get ans uh, executable and simple executable okay executables of course and many executables you get it not one two many and then second you get ansible config file okay you all also get ansible module and you will get ansible plugin okay you will get all this stuff when you install ansible you will get all this components okay now executable okay and modules plugins config file so first let me install this so this is the machines i got it for the demo and uh, now i'm going to install the ansible see so one two machines you can have a uh, rhl also so install ansible enter see the permission issues so i have to make it sudo and yes you can install in centos rhl instructions will not be a problem yeah we prefer centos because we are working on rhl no problem we will do that on centos also so if you want to install centos so uh, how do we tackle like uh, if you have a uh, if you have a remote server uh say mm -hmm. ubuntu uh, and different flavors of linux so the method you would be same to configure it everything is same linux linux simple let's not uh, differentiate ubuntu versus anything only package manager will change yam apt rest of the things will be same so what you want ha huh. so how to install ansible in uh rhl centros so you can use this one this this tutorial here you have a commands for it and let's say install ubuntu right so ansible ubuntu i just did this so i think that tutorial is not there it's just one command so that is it. 
So, okay, so one, now one question here, uh, like uh, Ansible mm -hmm. has worked. So currently we are expected to work on 2.9.1. So what's the difference between the versions of Ansible? Yes, just a second. We'll have to discuss this one. Uh, what exactly this prompted? I didn't know actually. Humans use outdated libraries. Uh, one thing, uh, I means I would recommend, uh, Rajesh, like if you can use uh, CentOS also, so we would be able to correlate with our environment as well. Like uh, as Ranjit said, like okay. uh, I do also have uh, a CentOS installed in my laptop. No problem. We'll just go for it. Mm. Uh, because you know working on ubuntu it's long back means uh, long long back we did that but uh, now it's not no, easy same thing right. same thing uh, there's not having any difference in terms of centos or rgl or Debian. all the commands only package manager change rest of the command system So this is the center, so I got it for you. Okay, so just a second, give me two seconds. I got your center and yeah. Now someone has asked some question. I said to wait. What was that question? What was that question? Version. No. Ah, okay. Ah, is, uh, yeah, I got it. So what is the difference actually? So see here, Ansible has been developed using Python, correct? So Ansible has been developed using Python. So here there's a Python 2.7 and there's a Python 3.0. Mind it here, these two differences are completely entirely different. Okay, understand that. That means the program which is written in Python 2.7 will not work with 3.0. And the program which is written in 3.0 will not work with 2.7. Why? Both are entirely different release. It's not like Java 8 program you can uh, you can run in Java 11 also. It's not like so both are entirely. So here, what is happening? Ansible 2.x developed using Python 2.x and uh, Ansible 3.x has been used Python 3.0. That means all the code has been rewritten from scratch only for 2.0. Make sense? This is the major difference. Apart from that, uh, let's say if you want to make, if you have installed Ansible 3.0, but for some of the modules you want to run Ansible with a Python 2.7, that customization is very much available. But at a at because it's a first class site, I don't want to complicate your understanding. So here, this is the major difference. Make sense? So here. Uh... Which one we are going to uh, learn a uh, three or two? Um, anything right now, three or two, both uh, have the same module name. Uh, that's what I was talking about. Modules name is matter a lot, not a version. Uh, but for me, it's same no. for you. You can use three dot latest one. That's not okay. No. okay. Okay, we are currently using, uh, we are supposed to use 2.9.1. 2 no problem, then we'll use 2.9. Oh, okay, so uh, I may be jumping, but uh, just a uh, simple question, like uh, the playbooks are portable, right? They can be, they can, uh, if a playbook is running on 2.7.1 environment, can it mm -hmm. run on 3.0 version or it's not? That's compatible? what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. For the Ansible, codes will be same. Uh, only the in installations will change for you. From from the playbook playbook perspective, you don't have to change too much actually. Don't worry. About okay. For for me, if I run my playbook on 2.x, 3.x, it will run because uh, same uh, same module has been used 
in the 2.x 3.x just like module has been uh, module and plugin has been coded in uh, python 2.x or 3.x so if you are using completely 3.x same module name will be there programming structure will be same but it will be running with the python 3. .x. okay so not much difference will see okay okay so let's decide which one you want 2.x sensible or 3.x Two is uh, two is fine. Like uh, still, uh, yes. Red Hat Lock is it. on two point uh, series, right? No, no, three dot oh else. Okay, anyways, just lock it because uh, trust me, if you learn this one, you are you are doing this one. You are you learning this one. You are doing this one. There is no much changes actually for for the playbook side. Okay, runtime environment def definitely there is changes, but from the playbook side, there is no changes. Okay. Okay, so now I got a, your uh, Linux um, CentOS machine, and uh, now uh, let me log in to that machine. So here, uh, as so such, in uh, uh, version three, we would have some extra, I would say, the modules, right? That is the only uh, difference. No, 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 no. Extra modules means uh, okay. I, just hold this question for time being because the moment uh, okay, just wait, hold them okay, because uh, you know how many modules you have in 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 ansible more than 5000 that means you'll you'll you if you start using each and every module uh, you will die actually so 5000 modules 5000 rows 10000 tell me how many how new how many new modules you use every day are you getting points so uh, different topics so just uh, uh, let's uh, in get into this okay so right now uh, first uh, first my approach would be very simple for you learn tool first then let's talk about two versus three and comparing which is better which is not better which module because you get lost actually in in the module itself or plugins itself or roles itself don't don't get lost okay now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to install the ansible uh, in in uh, uh, in uh, center so this is the instructions this instruction for two okay mind it so this is from one this is the way to so let me run this command i'm doing installations of in center this is into a seven okay in ra in rhel eight uh it's mandatory to use uh three is it like that uh rhel eight i have not tested to to be honest but it's coming with a python three i guess if i'm not wrong so check with that okay uh, one more thing uh, why you think so it's mandatory in rhl 8 3 or something because in say in 8 uh, i think uh, the python version they have uh, they have uh, 3 they by default it comes uh, as a 3 uh, see, i think so in 8 or maybe 9 it will come in future see so all not depends on the operating system it depends on the runtime ansible 2 to run you need a python 2 and ansible 3 to run you need a python 3 that's all so if you install python 2 which you can install so you can run python ansible 2 it's up to you Ma making sense mm, yeah okay so now what i did i installed this uh, ansible in uh, what you say uh, in centers now guys understand this i was discussing about the components of ansible so ansible the moment you install ansible okay you get a executable you get a modules you get a plugins you get a config file now the questions i am having in my mind what is modules what is plugins what is config this we need to understand so let me show you right directly rather than making you getting lost in the stuff so guys i installed ansible can i validate ansible version 
and here you see that ansible 2.9.7 by the way which python is been used look at this here somewhere this one so 2.7.5 now you want to upgrade it very much you can do that you can install the python 3 you can install the ansible 3 that's up to you you can do that but right now because you requested we'll go for it now in 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 another machine so let me check that which uh, uh, ansible got installed and ansible yeah so ansible hyphen version and you see here here python 3 got installed and see here uh, python 3 is there and still that ansible 2.10 is there got it so here upgrade has not happened so you have to manually upgrade okay so now coming back to main questions okay what is the executable so now let me show you executable size which ansible and where is ansible here go to the bin directory and here ls ansible okay start see that when you install ansible you see all these executables now you see ansible is there ansible iphone 2 is there 2.7 is there config is there so now we'll see that you will ask us what exactly all this thing ansible i know that i can correlate so but what is console what is the doc what is the galaxy what is inventory what is a playbook what is a pull what is a vault Correct now, all of you. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So slowly, slowly we'll get into that. For time being, I just want to tell you if you want to run some some changes in the remote machine here or here through the command line from the ACS command. Okay, then we use Ansible. But if you want to run some playbook in the ARS then use playbook okay what is the galaxy and all i'll talk about later because don't want to push so much information at a time okay so now you got this one clear are you okay executable done all of you so yeah, yeah. Uh, these executables are uh, what all files we saw in uh, bin so those are executable files that's correct yeah. these Huge cases are different. Uh, okay. So uh, as of now, I said command line if you want to exclude Ansible, playbook you want to exclude, play simple. Rest of the things we'll discuss a little bit later. Okay. So can I talk about the module? Guys, mm -hmm. please hear me out and try to understand this. What I'm trying to say. What is the modules? So it's a script, guys. Yeah. The script is written in Python or PowerShell or anything i said anything it can be written in anything but i'll not complicate too much right now python and powershell python or powershell so this is script which need which will run which would run in ars that's called module so if someone will ask you module means it's a script it's a code it's a it's a code which would run in ars it's simple and clear, I mean, simple statement, and I think it should be clear now. Correct now? Hello? Okay. Yeah. Simple. It's a Python script. Let me show you. So you'll have a little bit of memory in your mind also. So where is the script? I don't know. So I'll just ask Ansible. Ansible, give me all this information. So they are giving me all this information. See here. Model locations. I'll just go to that directory and see here this you see here the uh, executor it's a category parsing category modules directly let's go for this and here see that cloud clustering commands crypto database files identity inventory blah 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 okay now you see you think this is the module no 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 these are the categories let me show you if I show you the UI, it will be easy for you. Ansible modules, I'll put in Google and here all modules. And you see that this is a all modules, but I wanted to go to the category. So go back and here click on this all modules. And no, that page is not coming. Why is not coming? 
here this one this is a page which i have done see this is a what category this is the same category you have here also now inside that if you go you will find a modules let's say files modules which is a category i'll click on it so these are so many modules you have so these all are script actually one single script let me go to the files module okay see that these all are python script see that py 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 correct no? understanding mm -hmm. so module is what module is a script which is running in the, which would run in a ars i'll i'll tell you in simple way uh, uh think simple always from here you run some commands and from here that command will run and that command will do the some copy so just think simple for copy okay what is the parameter needed parameter what source file and destination file correct now and what file see Savannah. source location destination location and uh, uh, what is what is that source and file name correct file name correct now all of you yeah yeah so yeah here also what they have done they have written a script we call it a module in ansible which would run and accept parameter parameter okay also you don't worry about that just at a high level i'm telling you you get comfortable now next question is what is ansible oh, sorry what is the plugin so plugin is a again a script okay don't this is a code this is also code okay this is a code it can be any code also for the sake of it but i'm not complicating it can it's a python code for time being it can be literally any code by the way but uh, python code for time being code which adds which empower a functionality of ansible did you understand that did you understand that functionality of ansible okay what so here ansible you have a 10 features i said ansible ars remember ars sorry sir acs so here you do a lot of things right you run the command you run the playbook you create inventory you do this you do that you authentication authorization lots of functionality ansible have it so how that's being empowered is getting empowered by plugin plugin is also code let me show you here okay plugin is also code written in python so where is these all are plugins actually okay here you can go to plugins directory dedicated these all are plugins so here inventory managing management using ansible this plugin you want to do some lookups you want to do some variables work shell work terminal work uh connections work cache work action work callback works and filter works so all these features what you have in ansible it's coming from the plugin so ACS this modules plugins a uh, modules plugin this applies only on the server side or the acs no no sir on don't call modules plugin sir sir call ansible modules will work in uh, will will up, uh, will run in the ars means remote servers and plugins which is the functionality of the ansible itself which is in acs only control server remote server control server remote server control server so essentially you are saying uh, at the ars you need a you need a module right so uh, we don't need a module to... again i am saying don't need a module understand that i don't need a module in ars i need a code here module here which will be copied through the ssh to the ars and then run it okay so on fly uh, at the execution it will be copied to ars that's what you are saying correct here with the parameter yeah, so that is here you see yeah ha remember component yeah. of ansible these all are component where is being installed you look at this here ansible is installing this is not i did not say anything in ars make sense okay got it guys yeah 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 so remember the plugin which is a code 
for in, in, enhancing the functionality of ansible or empowering the functionality of ansible module is the code again which is being used to run in the uh, ars remote server now let me tell you here guys how many modules you have keep counting it that's the reason i said don't get lost uh, don't get into that question because you will never get a chance to utilize all these modules never get a chance okay so only focus on what you need it for the project look for the modules and then work is done okay now next one is what is a config file let me show you the location of config files i don't know so i will ask ansible itself hey ansible give me that locations of configuration file and here ansible gave me the location of config, conf, configuration file which is etc ansible cfg now the, the question is what is a configuration file i mean what did it contains so guys understand this in a simple way do you remember this executable yeah that All lies in bin yes bin wonderful so in bin what has happened ansible has multiple variables okay so what ansible has done it they hard coded in this ansible executable they hard coded so that means whenever you run ansible command ansible playbook commands or blah 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 commands all these hard coded variables will be taken but sometime you know what you want to override that variable you want to override that variable you can't modify the executable simple you can't modify the executable for that behavior variables values so how do you modify the variables of executable answer is this file understood so any executable which i have shown you you want to modify that the, the behavior of that variables which is set in the executable you can use this file so basically here this file using that you can override the default value of the executable let me show you override you can change that okay so this is the file okay it's a pretty long file actually and anything you want to change see all these are commented and default value they will tell you okay these are the values which we set for ansible executable if you want to override it please override it again depends on the needs will go and touch this file because when so you once you want to override you can override make sense all of you hmm. all of you yeah yeah for example what options override let's say from acs parallel connections go to five machines at a time now you say no 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 i have a too many servers and this acs is very high end so i want to go 25 so fork change the fork key i'll just i'm just giving you example change the fork grab i said i fork and here you can change this here fork five you said you can override to 10 15 20 parallel stuff you you will write so like that hell lot of things are there understood guys all of okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so guys here when you install ansible you get all this thing you should know modules you should know plugins you should know config file you should know executable and you become comfortable i showed you and then finally you will understand this one so, so ansible uh, Uh, here one question is one uh, ansible is install on one acs on one server okay Contro okay we control node with what we call now i have five uh, uh, administrators who are administrating different set of servers so in that case uh, how do you, how do you do that uh, like ansible.cfg will be different for each every no, person no. Or? so there is only one ansible right so how can you have a 5 cfg though actually theoretically you can have it but i don't want to tell you right now all the stuff theoretically you can have it but cfg will be one because only one ansible see this is the ansible so this is the cfg simple for this ansible yeah but okay. one control no yeah. node is used by five five people who are all administrators of the linux farm or linux server ah. whatever ah. then in that case the ansible ca this this is the default what you have shown the location etc ansible right. ansible dot cfg this is the default ansible cfg right correct but for each profile the person who uh, administrator who is logging on to server will have a different uh, will have a different uh, ansible dot cfg location correct no 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 okay i understand what i said please understand i understood your question probably but let me answer in my way okay see what i said is 
this file is only needed for changing the behavior of ansible executable now very simple i said if you want to change the behavior of default values then you you override this file else you don't touch it this file now the question is all five people wants to change their behavior is that the question let's say uh, for example i will put it in this way let's say one administrator one wants five folk administrator two one ten folk administrator three one uh, 154 correct is that something you are saying yeah so there is there something different... yeah, yeah so uh, no my question is there can be uh, multiple servers say i have 10 servers and three three administrators okay now in that case each win each one will have a different ansible.cfg correct no 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 why why tools are same no sir that's no, what i am saying I... yeah but in ansible cfg uh, you configure the you can configure the characteristics right uh, for what say if, say for Which example one? you have a you have a different location uh, you have a different location for uh, uh, so what are rules. the rules yeah yeah like that so we we have different vari variables in ansible cfg so for there are three users um, on a control no, node no, no, each will have a no. different uh, ansible cfg that's what i'm uh, my question is no 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 okay no it's i understood your question there is wait wait, wait. Uh, i understood your question but there is no straight forward answer i'll tell you why understand this way please hear me out clearly these are the in this image three 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 guys are there who is connecting to the acs okay remember that remember that ansible cfg please understand that ansible cfg uh, how to tell you let me put it up in this way here there is a default value which is set where in executable do you want to override it then probably we use this file okay now do you want to still override this guy also then you can use environment or you can use variables in invent uh, variables of uh, ansible playbook or whatever it is so there's so many ways you can override it so default value is set here in this file you can override for the entire system this is the entire system you can set an environment you can override it you can override this guy also by <coughs> sorry by did you understand each user will have their own ansible cfg also possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. done okay but we do not have it why because understand that probably you are mixing two things here you don't want to change this ansible you don't want to change this ansible behavior you want to change the variables of the inventory the ars that's a different concept altogether we'll discuss later but yeah okay just Thanks. to answer your question you can Set set default value is here. You can override here. You can set it up here. You can set it in environment. You can set it in any other places also. There are so many places in Ansible where you can override it. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah. It's all about the values. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, see, there are three administrator. One is uh, responsible for web server. Another uh, one is for for database server. Okay. In that case, each uh, administrator will have his own inventory. Okay. So when he changes the inventory. uh it, that has to Sorry. reflect in ansible that's what my question was no anyway, that I think, answer I'll... i think we are, i think i'm jumping uh, one step yeah. ahead yeah. we'll come to yeah. that when, okay yeah, yeah. so yeah <clears throat> so this is the things i was discussing something so yeah so this is the ansible guys so we install ansible we get executable you get a modules you get a plugins and you got a configuration file remember that each of this i said very clearly do not forget in a simple word now what is inventory this i don't know what is playbook this i don't know so we need to know inventory we need to know playbook also so let me finish this one today only so at a high level i'm teaching you because each and every topics will go into details don't worry about that because you need to know at the context level inventory means what inventory means inventory means 
list of ip address that's all of ars will you remember this yeah inventory means list of ip address host name also it can be possible you know that so i'll, I'll not spoon feed like that ip address of ars okay now tell me one thing i'll just tell me i'll, I'll ask you 10.4.5.4 c.3. something like that is this is the list of ip address tell me it should I be i think it should be one in by uh, one. vertical uh, one by one ha huh, that's so that's okay i understood the square bracket yeah but this is the list right correct no multiple elements correct no? ha ah. tell me one thing this is the list in terms of python it is a list no it's a ip address of one ip address is this the yeah. list separated by comma ha correct this is not a list but if you keep this one this become a list correct conceptually i am teaching conceptually so because comma means it's a list of one component element which you have in the list are you getting my points yeah yeah wonderful so understand that list means list of ip address separated by comma or some other delimiters also i'll not complicate too much now now guys you know what inventory means list of ip address that's all but the question is where to put it where to put it you can put it over the commands okay you can put it in the file you can put it in the directory you can generate this list from the script okay so we'll go into one by one in detail oh, sorry you can put this list of ip address on the command file inventory i mean directory and script i think you are using file i mean just by the way you talk i got to know you are using file inventory file mm -hmm. got it so this list of ip address can be command for example like this or in the file it can be stored like this like that in the file in the directory it can be directory 1 and inventory file this is a file it can be inventory and in inventory it can be like this as well has lots of customization to be honest okay this you can put it in directory and inventory file this is a file okay inventory file okay and you can generate a script and the script dot py and this return you should also have a list so that is done so you understand the inventory means what so in inventory is is there in the yes yes correct na all of you correct na okay now last component what is a playbook so for i need a little bit a different session for playbook but here it's a deployment script in yaml format which would run in ars now one thing one thing if you i just want to ask you one thing in in ars acs we have which is running in the ars what was that ars oh, that's module module so yes this contain module that's all so playbook contains modules that's all copy module start module service module file module this module that module contains module so playbook is just say yaml script i'll i'll deep dive into a little bit more is the same introductory level and so got it so this is the yeah playbook so now guys last thing 
the work i mean learning flow of this training so let me ask you one thing simple i'll ask you very simple thing if you want to copy a file from one location to another location would you prefer command or script tell me just copying one file command command one 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 things to do then you will use a command 10 things to do then you will use script correct because you don't want to run those 10 things correct na yeah simple logic so here guys first thing we know what i will teach you one changes to be done in ars remember one changes to be done in ars so that i will teach you and simple ad hoc command but when you start doing 10 20 30 40 things then i will teach you ansible playbook okay so this is the workflow so let me show you the workflow how we will go ahead and uh, do that so for that i will this the flow will follow for your learnings and that is see read this so first i will teach you this one add hoc commands using that you what you can do do one task in one machine local host do only one task in one remote machine do one task in a multiple remote machines do one task in a multiple remote machine using group and inventory but after that you get bored with ad hoc commands then i'll teach you playbook do multiple tasks in one machines do multiple tasks in one remote machines do multiple tasks in multiple remote machines and after that and after that i'll teach you using role program same understood now so next sessions i will show you this one and this one slowly we'll get into that this one makes sense mm -hmm. any questions you have so this role uh, so, uh, is like uh, 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 one word we have used uh, uh, galaxy so role is what galaxy will be learning right no 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 we'll create our own do okay. we'll, we'll 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 do that don't worry about that uh, just uh, okay. in this flow we'll we'll go ahead so first command line then playbook then do okay because role is the last to to do okay so uh, uh, i have one thing like uh, in uh, maybe ranjit shared that thing i'm not sure but Uh, in our environment like uh, what we are doing is uh, we have a kvm and on top of it uh, with ansible we are creating uh, vms so that is the one thing i would like to uh, see and learn other thing is like uh, uh, the interfaces and bridges uh, in terms of networking how it is see. getting created using ansible if we can yeah, see so that i'll set the expectations here uh, this training is not a customized training actually okay so anything which is general generic and ansible we'll discuss that one and we'll show you the demo if you want some of the project related stuff or some customizations and all so you have to take not through the training but consult it okay so you have to talk to the patrick and he'll help you with that okay so a custom again each okay. participant let's say i have three participants in this session if everyone will come up with their own stuff then the training the agenda will be violated and that will be no problem so let me complete the training if you want on top of that if you want something else to be delivered we can get no, no, the no. consult what, what along with that you can access our other tutorials such as docker ansible jenkins terraform splunk AWS Azure and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. 
If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, if you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, ETC. Kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. You would have access to 100s of playlists and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership. Enjoy!